Kobe Covington is here. Hey, Colby. How are you, man? Welcome, man. How are you? Good to see you. You too. Uh, yeah, what, what do you think? I, I don't mind him being on the main card. I kind of get why CM Punk, they put him and in, uh, in, in Mike Jackson on the main card. Yeah, there are some that think that that are annoyed that CM Punk is on the main card because it was pushing other guys Alistair off Wolverine, the main Curtis card. Blades, yeah. I guess you got to look at it in terms of, you know, are you looking at it like a business? Or are you looking at it like strictly who deserves to be where based on numbers, right? Yeah, do you think that's a, what do you think? What do you think? That, is that a good business move or is that one of those things that they shouldn't have done? Yeah, I definitely think it was a good business move. You know, CM Punk is a proven draw. You know, he from pro wrestling, he sells pay per views, so it's definitely going to boost up the pay per view numbers. So it's interesting though because Conor McGregor's a proven draw too. But didn't you say he was like a coked out leprechaun or something like that? Yeah, but just because I'm saying he's a coked up little leprechaun doesn't mean that he's not a draw. You know, he's still oh. a draw and. He, you know, hopefully I can get that fight down the line. My favorite part of that, by the way, is how you corrected him and you put in little. You, said, <laughs> <laughs> you put in little leprechaun. You, you've kind of, uh, you, you seem to, like, you do talk a lot of shit about other fighters and you seem pretty comfortable doing it. Like, did you always do that or was it one of those things that it's just started to feel good once you did it? Oh, uh, you know, it's it's always been something I, I grew up doing. I've always uh, been confident and just, you know, spoke my mind. I speak what a lot of the people want to say, but they can't say, so I'm just a voice for the people. How much of it is uh, just kind of selling the fight? Because there is, there's, a, there's a business element of promoting the fight, and how much of it is I really don't like this guy or I don't like Brazilians or whatever? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. You know, if you do something stupid like Miss Wade or just do something stupid, I'm definitely going to call you out on it and call it a spade a spade. But uh, the other stuff, yeah, it's a lot of promoting. You know, if people, they want to take one side or another, they want to hate me, they're going to tune in, they want to see me lose. Yeah, because you call people out for not making weight even though you're not going to fight them. Like, you've called people yeah. out that you there is no physical possibility that you're going to have a yeah, fight with You're them. not fighting Mackenzie Dern. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. What, did, what did he do for Mackenzie Dern? Uh, it was a very unkind comment about... She missed weight, I think, by what, was it eight pounds or something? It was, yeah. it was, it was, it was a huge... Something it was almost like she went up to another is. weight class. Uh -huh. But it was it was very unkind, I think. Yeah. What did yeah. you do? Miss Piggy picture? Oh, I just called her Miss Piggy, you know? Oh. <laughs> I, I had her transform her from Miss Piggy to, to her face, so... I see. Fans love that. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could see where she wouldn't have probably been in favor of it yeah no i know she was pretty uh pissed off about it i'm pretty sure she blocked me on all social media outlets oh, that's too bad <laughs> you, you and uh, you don't get any shit from the ufc for that they don't care no nah, they don't care man this is the fight business man this isn't the feelings business we're going in a steel cage getting locked in there trying to take each other's brain cells so a couple words that's not going to hurt a ufc fighter do you think it's part of it too because it seems like when you watch like uh Connor when he fought uh, fought Jose Aldo, like he was so angry at Connor, he just ran in through a, a punch and got knocked out. Is, is there a part of that too, where you you want to upset people so much that they don't fight the way they're supposed to fight? Yeah, there's definitely an element to getting under someone's skin before the fight, and Connor was the best at doing that. He got guys so hyped up and so mad they would come out just throwing their game plans out the window. So there's definitely an element to that that, that I love, and, and guys are going to really wear themselves out trying to kill me in there. What started What started the, the dislike of Brazil or calling Brazilians filthy animals? Did something happen that did that, or was that just one of those things in the in the, the Is that cage? something that Kobe did? That he, is that a direct quote? Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty direct quote. It was a, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you said it in Brazil, you're, you're filthy animals. Animals, you're, you're, you suck. I mean, you, you didn't say it from here. You said it right there. Yeah, just the way they, <laughs> the way they treat people, man. All the fighters that have went in there in the past, I've taken note of this throughout my career, and they call people, you uh, you will die when you walk to the octagon. You buy more. And when I was walking to the octagon, they were throwing stuff at me, like trying to grab my American flag, and I'm all about our system, man, land of the free, home of the brave. So you mess with the, the American flag, then I'm really going to have some words for you. So, you know, they want to give me banter, say I'm going to die. You know, I'm going to give them some banter too. Do you really dislike Brazil? Uh, no, I love Brazilian women, man. Uh, Brazilian, Brazilian women, yeah, yeah I've gone to Rio deal. a couple of times too. I mean, you're, it was probably a different, more expensive venture for me than it is for you. You think so? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it was fun. You had to buy more than drinks for girls. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got that. Yeah, got that. Now, do the Brazilian women though, when you're trying to like uh, talk to them, are they ever like, well, you know, you call the people in our country filthy animals? Like, is that something that you have to get past, or do they not care? No, they don't care. They, they know don't care. they know I'm the king of Brazil, man. That's <laughs> all the women are romanticizing about me and all the people are putting their firstborns that named after me. So <laughs> They're naming a lot of people after you in Brazil? Yeah, yeah man, they're naming their firstborns after me. The chaos uh, the king of Brazil. Wow, I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, did you want to fight there? Because you're fighting uh, Dos Anjos in Chicago. It's the co-main event. Uh, you all Romero and uh, Robert Whitaker is the main event. It's an amazing card. Uh, the Chicago card is fucking phenomenal. Did you want to fight in uh, on on the on the Rio card originally? 
Yeah, I was begging to fight Rio. I really wanted to go back to Rio. I wanted to give Brazil <laughs> the, the show that they deserve. So I begged to go back there, but you know the powers that be made. They didn't want this glorious moment to happen on uh, Brazilian soil. They wanted it to happen on U.S. soil. So you know I'm fine with having title fights and champagne on U.S. soil. Were they, you, sorry, were they worried about what what might happen if you went down there? I mean, there's only so much you can cover somebody in an event with you yeah. know fifteen thousand people. Uh, you know, I don't, I think they might have been worried, but you know, uh, I don't know. I think the security guards were more worried about what was going to happen to them having bullet flies in me. But I'm not, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of death. I'm not scared to have bullets coming my way. So it didn't matter to me. What do you do when you're in Brazil? Like, what do you do I, I, socially? Like, because I wouldn't imagine you could leave the hotel because, especially the men in Brazil, if you're calling them pieces of garbage and then uh, having sex with their women. And then they're also naming their children after you. <laughs> I'd be so pissed if I was a guy in Brazil and I'd probably want to hurt you. Yeah. And there's a lot of them, you know? That's true. You know, you, I mean, fight week, you don't really do much anyways. You stay in the hotel, you do media, you cut weight. So there's not much stuff you do out in, in Brazil. But, you know, in South Florida, there's a lot of Brazilians on the beaches. And, and I could definitely see the anger in their eyes. But they know those filthy animals can't touch you. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> and what see. happened when, uh, when Verdum approached you? I think that was Australia, right? Where he... Yeah. I mean, you know, Fabricio's a, a very big guy. What was going through your mind when he's coming up to you and it was legit and he was angry? Well, he caught me off guard. I was getting ready to go promote his show. I was going to go to Fox Sports Australia, and I'm sitting down looking at my phone, you know, typing some shit to Tyrone Woodley. And then all of a sudden, out of, my, out of the corner of my eye, I just get, like, hit in the side of the face, and I look look back. I'm like, what? what's going on? And Fabricio Werdum's walking at me with his coach, Rafael Cordero. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Like, you're a heavyweight. You got to fight this weekend. Why are you messing with me? Oh, you call, my, you call Brazil a dump. Oh, you said filthy animals. I'm going to kill you. And then he pulls out, like, a boomerang and throws the boomerang at me. And I'm just like, dude, you're just proving everything I said right that you are a filthy animal that you're going to condone yourself like this we're professional fighters you get paid to fight in a cage you don't get paid to fight in the streets so stop acting like a criminal is there a part of it though where like okay he, like uh, like when Cyborg, I forget who Cyborg slapped to the face. Is there a thing like when you're when you're saying stuff to a guy who's out of your weight class, like you know you're not going to fight him so how what is he supposed to like how is he supposed to handle that I never said anything about Fabrizio no no but you know what I'm anything. saying like, uh, like with Usman Kamara oh. Usman yeah, you know, any guys that I'm saying about or girls, you know, if they're saying something about it, you know, I got 24 hour security on me now. So Dan Lambert, my manager's got all the money in the world. So, you know, it is what it is. They're going to have their feelings hurt. You know, this isn't the feelings business, you know, and I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make money. When you were backstage and you, what started it with you and, and, and Usman? Uh, you know, no, no comment. I don't have anything to say about that scrub. No, you don't want okay, to talk well, about you him. just call him a scrub, so that is oh, a yeah. one. Okay. You did say one yeah, thing yeah. about him. I mean, he's he's not on my level. I'm on the bigger and better things. You know, I got a paycheck with extra zeros at the end. I got bigger things to focus on, bigger fish to fry. Are you surprised when a guy like that confronts you backstage? Like, this isn't a yeah. show where yeah, this is real of, life? Yeah. Yeah, it was completely fake. You know, he, he told his friend, hey, man, turn on the camera real quick. Let's get some uh, footage of you talking shit at Colby Covington. And he's talking to me when he knows that the biggest thing just happened the night before with Conor McGregor. So all that bus trolley stuff. So UFC is already on high alert. They're like, okay, Colby, nothing can happen. Like, don't let anything happen. So he knows it, nothing's going to happen backstage. Like, we're professional fighters. So he knows he, he's got the green light just to kind of, like, you know, promote himself and get, get his name out there. And, and good for the little kid, you know. He, he's a maniac and bed sheets that night so you weren't it wasn't a, it wasn't like you were uncomfortable with what he was saying or afraid you just were like you didn't want to be involved yeah i was just laughing i'm like dude yeah okay you're here to promote your fight and you're over here trying to yell at me and scream and talk about me i, I don't give a shit about you kid like i got bigger things to do junior there is there, there is something too with it raises your profile because in the last year i mean since since that happened in brazil i mean I'll, you know you're fighting for an interim belt now like not that you don't deserve it i mean you're 13 to 1 but still your your name is a lot more people know your name now than they did a year ago. Yeah, I'm, uh, right now I'm the hottest name in the game. You can't deny that. I'm in the headlines every week. You know, I'm a, so I'm a, I'm a money print machine. And I mean, historically in UFC, the people who talk shit, they end up getting. I mean, they're all good fighters, but they end up getting better fights. They end up making more money. Like that is kind of what happens because it gives people a reason to care about this fight. Like this isn't just like okay, I care because it's two great athletes competing. It's like no, 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 no. There's a real personal rivalry happening here. Now, do you, are there things that people can say about you that would make you, because you're saying we're professional fighters, you shouldn't be doing stuff like that, but you take a lot of shots. Are there things that if people were taking shots at you the way you take shots, that you wouldn't be as professional? 
no, nah, say whatever you want to say. Like, I don't block anybody on social media. You want to come over? You want to say you want me to die? You want ISIS to come get my family? I get those messages every day. So, you know, say whatever you want. Nothing's going to hurt my feelings. I'm not a snowflake. It doesn't hurt you when somebody says, I want ISIS to come and kill your family? Not at all. I just kind of laugh at it that they get so emotional, you know, that they're, they're in their feelings like a little girl. You're a strong man. Yeah, I, that, would bother, man. that would probably bother me. It would bother you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they mock my appearance. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about the, when you said Mike Perry, you, you, you badmouthed Mike Perry's girlfriend. Was that just one of those things in the moment like that you're like, uh, or, or do, you, do you stand by that? Or were you like one of those things where you're like, I kind of shouldn't have said that? No, I completely stand by that. You know, okay. you should have heard some of the stuff he was saying in the lead oh. up to his fight. Oh, Colby's going to suck my dick. Oh, Colby's going to do this. You know, he's talking a lot of shit. We fought on the same card when I fought in Sacramento. So, you know, his girlfriend was chattering too. And, and she chatters at fighters too. Oh, my boyfriend's going to knock you out. So oh. she's not exempt, you know, like she's not, you don't get a free pass. Remember Edmer, Edmund Tarvidon? He used to get so much shit in Ronda's corner, and he got all the shit. So, so where's uh, equalism? Like, you want to be treated fairly, like a man, you know, and treated by, like a person. You know, she's not safe. Okay, so you're saying because she was kind of a part of that world, and oh, okay. So the question on everybody's mind, besides your fight in Chicago, are you gonna when you're in Chicago, are you gonna slap Joe Rogan? Joe Rogan has asked you not to. I saw it on his podcast. Yeah. You said that you might that there was a chance that you would go to, over to the commentary table and smack him because Joe Rogan made comments about comments that you made about John Jones kind of telling you you should maybe relax because John Jones is a bad motherfucker. And you responded with, maybe Joe Rogan should relax. I'll smack him when I see him in Chicago. Uh, are you going to smack him? Uh, you know, I can't give away my secrets. You know, I'm definitely going to have a talk to him face to face. And when I see him face to face in Chicago, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Tempers might fly. You know, I might do something crazy. You just have to tune in. So this is what this is what I can't wrap my head around that. I feel like these fights, you would have to be so focused on the fight to do them successfully. But I feel like you just have to, you just fire so many shots at all times that every time you walk in a room, there's like 150 rivalries happening all at once. How can you possibly concentrate on a big fight while also knowing, oh, I'm also, maybe I'll smack the commentator when I'm done. And, oh yeah, that guy over there. And oh, there's a Brazilian guy in the audience. That's right, I yes. call him a filthy animal. Yeah, and oh a, yeah, some of the heavyweights are pissed. Yeah, there's a fuck, and there's a middleweight throwing a fucking didgeridoo at me. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, how do you possibly concentrate? Uh, you know, that I'm just very calm under pressure. And you know, my movement that I got going on, the nerd bash movement, no nerd safe, so nobody's safe, okay. and, and I don't let things get to my mind. You know, a lot of people, they have so many things going on in my mind. I, I just, you know, I stay calm and cool and is, collected. Does part of it, too, like with all these distractions and all this stuff, whether it's Rogan or it's, you know, shit about John, does part of that kind of keep you from having to be obsessed with the fight? Like sometimes when your mind is focused on 10 different things, you don't sure. have to fo focus and worry about the one thing. Does it kind of just kind of keep you a little bit more even? Yeah, absolutely. You know, guys sometimes get so focused on fights. Oh, I need to do this. I need to train extra. You know, I need to do this. I don't like to be that way. I like to not think about it. You know, I know how to fight. I, I know I'm the best fighter in the world. So it's more just, you know, going through the motions. And I, I know when I get out there, you know, I'm going to turn on that switch. But in the meantime, you know, I just like to stay cool and calm. And that's how I stay calm. Tell me about the nerd bash movement. Because I thought we were kind of living yeah. in a society where we were empowering geek culture and you know, comic cons are these uh, huge pop culture <clears throat> events and, and, you know, video gamers make millions of dollars and all this stuff. Like I thought, I thought geek and nerd culture was kind of a, a powerful thing now. And, but what, what is the nerd bash movement? Well, let's let's first establish who the nerds are. The, okay. The nudes, the nerds are all these Cheeto eating dorks that are in their mom's basement and they want to play Fortnite and UFC matchmaker and tell me how to do my job. They right. haven't done shit with their lives, but they want to come on social media and act like they can tell me what to do. And all I gotta say is, next nerd on the guest list is Ralphie Dos Nachos. <laughs> Dos Nachos. <laughs> a, a slight mispronunciation. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little uh, bit. Yeah, That's and they're okay. fighting the uh, the, the co-main event and. Um, uh, the main event's a great fight, too. Uh, you all against uh, Robert Whitaker. They fought once before, and, and, and I guess there was an injury, and now um, you all is back fighting for the um, championship. But I'm, I'm surprised they moved um, uh, what's, uh, Overeem down onto the prelims. I kind of wanted to see him on the main card. Yeah, I agree. You know, he's a, he's a legend in the game. You know, they kind of did him dirty. I don't know why they put Holly Holm up there. You know, she doesn't sell. She's not going to talk to sell the fight, so it doesn't really make sense to put her up there. What did you think about Wonder Boy, Till? I thought Wonder Boy won that fight. 
Uh, I thought Wonder Boy won. Uh, it looked like a game of patty cake, though. You know, that's not what the UFC pays for. You know, I mean, it looks like they're trying to mimic like uh, Tyron Woodley. He's made this whole division boring, and that's why I'm here to save this division and make this division great again. Because these guys are out there; they're just throwing the least amount of significant strikes. I mean, look at them in their fight; they're throwing the most amount of significant glove touches and the most significant hugs ever in a fight. That's just a joke. It's sad. Yeah, Woodley got a lot of shit because of his Damian Maya fight, but I kind of like, you know, I, I guess like, what are you supposed to? do every time you throw a punch Maya's going to try to take you down you handled him a lot differently yeah I handled him completely different I left him in a pool of blood in three rounds I, I doubled mm -hmm. the significant struck to strike total in three rounds versus his five rounds so there's a way you could fight him that's just excuses if you say you need to fight him because he's a specialist you're a wrestler you should just stuff his takedowns in and pound him out do you feel like uh, are, you, are you a sportsman after your fights do you think like after this fight should you win you'll approach your opponent handshake hug you know, good battle, it's over? Uh, you know, I'm definitely a sportsman, but, you know, I don't, I don't know about a hug. You know, we might be, I might be like, hey, man, acknowledge, hey, good job, man, good fight, but, you know, we're, we're warriors, we're putting all on the line, so. But, uh, I mean, I'm not going to be hugging, like, every round, trying to hug every five seconds. You know, good job, man. You're here for business, I'm here for business. Now, what if, what if you go in and be like, hey, man, that was a great fight, and he's like, fuck you, you still call me Dos Nachos. Like, I'm not happy with you. yeah. That's what I'm expecting, you know, is these guys not, there's not going to be any sportsmen about it. They're going to be salty after I knock them out, and they're not going to want a handshake or, or hug, you know. Although I'd after uh, Chael Sonnen and Anderson Silva, if those guys get hugged at the end of it, I mean, anybody can get along at the end of a fight. That's true. Is that, would you look at what Chael Sonnen did with Anderson Silva as kind of like a, a blueprint for how somebody can successfully, because I mean, Chael Sonnen took promoting to a different level, I think, in UFC. Yeah, Chael's one of my boys, you know, we grew up in Oregon together, I used to train with him, so, you know, I've definitely gotten some uh, pointers and tips from the American uh, Oregon gangster. He really, Chael could get under people's skin cool. like almost nobody in history, yeah. but but didn't he fuck up with the flag, like he did something with the Brazilian flag that he actually had to go, alright, sorry, like I think he stepped on the flag or something. Like that he was went like, one step too yeah, far? Yeah, and it's in the spirit of promoting, but then he had to go like, alright, I shouldn't have done that. Is there anything you've done <laughs> that you're like, that was, uh, that was one step too far? No, no. You know, I know where the line's at. I don't ever cross the line. I step right up to it. I'll put my toes right on the line, but I don't ever cross that line. What, is, what is your line? Yeah. What is your personal line? Uh, you know, there's not really a line for me. You know, I do whatever I want, say what I want. I know there's some some barriers you just don't cross. You don't talk about religion. You don't talk about race. And, you know, those are lines I'll never cross. But, I mean, you don't talk about nationality. Yeah. Yeah, nationality is different, man. Nationality oh, okay. is not race, man. <laughs> you really do if you walk can, right if you up to that line. If you conduct yourself like a filthy animal and you're, you're screaming at people, throwing stuff at people, acting like that, then don't expect for me not to say something back to you if you're saying stuff like that to me. Right, yeah, but I guess it would probably make less people upset if you said the people in this audience are filthy animals versus the people of Brazil are filthy animals. See, that's the thing, though. You're not a filthy animal unless you're accepting that you're a filthy animal. So it's it's all about how you take it. I see. So it's not just because you say it doesn't mean it's yeah, true. exactly. It doesn't you make just... it so. And if you're not a filthy animal, you should know you're not a filthy animal. Yeah, right. exactly. But in your experience, the people that are like, how dare you say that about me, have conducted themselves like, as you said, filthy animals. Yeah. Okay. How do your Brazilian teammates uh, or, or people you train with, how do they respond to it? Like, do, Have you had to talk to them and go, look, you know, this is just what it is. I'm... I'll promote a fight or, or has there been like any problems behind the scenes with people that you normally would have gotten along with? Yeah, you know, the guys at the gym, they really took it personal. You know, I kind of got cut off from the Brazilians and American top team in the gym and they don't train with me anymore. So. <laughs> but it is Did you it try is, to man. tell them, hey guys, I mean, you're not filthy animals just because I said it, you know, we can still train together. Yeah, my, my manager actually had a sit down with him. He owns American top team, Dan Lambert, and he had a sit down. Hey man, Colby's just trying to sell fights. He's trying to make money. He's trying to get a title fight. So he sat him down and gave him the, the, the Q&As, but... You know, at the end of the day, they take stuff personal and they really take uh, pride behind their country. Yeah, and, so and was there a moment where they, where they were like, we're just not forgiving this guy? Or did you not want to dial back? Or did they want an apology that you wouldn't give? Yeah, exactly. They want an apology that I wasn't going to give. I said, hey, man, I'm promoting my fights. You know, if you got a problem with that, then you know where the door is. You didn't care. You didn't care. And how about John Jones, too? Yeah. I, now, you, how did you know John coming up? Uh, me and John lived together two years uh, in Iowa Central and Community College together. So you were, when you say live together, you don't mean in the same, in, in the same dorm or? In the same dorm, in the same bedroom. We shared the same room. Okay. So you, you were roommates. Okay. Roommates, yeah. um, Cause sometimes people are like, yeah, I know him from school and they just went to school together. Yeah. And did you guys get along then? Yeah. We were like best friends when we first met each other. What so, happened? Yeah. 
Uh, you know, he just started doing steroids and he just freaking always had road rage. He'd come home, he'd yell at me, oh, what, what the fuck are you doing, Kobe? Do the dishes. And he would just like literally freak out. Like I would see this road rage in his eyes and I would just be like, dude, what's your deal, man? Because he was trying to go from, what he was wrestling at 197. He was a national champ in junior college and he was trying to beef up and go to heavyweight. So he thought he had to do a cycle of roids and, he, you know, he just, I just lost a lot of respect for him. He started partying a lot, doing ecstasy, doing all these drugs and, and, uh, you know, the rest was history. So he's been doing steroids for a long time? Yeah, he's been doing them since college. Wow. Oh, I hate how does to he think that about Jones. Yeah, how does he get <laughs> as far as he did, like in the UFC, for example? Because he had a good run. Well, dude, USADA wasn't always testing, though. That's exactly. USADA, USADA didn't come around until, like, uh, I think two years ago or so. I see. So they're kind of recent with the sport before, you know. Uh, you know, they weren't really testing as much. Did believe- everybody kind of know? Like, did everybody, like, you knew, obviously, the whole time he's in UFC, that guy's using steroids. Yeah. Do people in the UFC, do fighters know, okay, we all know what the deal is with Jones, or does it not really come out until it's a story? I think a lot of people knew, you know. He was he was wrecking Bentleys that the UFC gave him. He was, uh, you know, hookers in the back of his car partying, cocaine bingers all night, and then he was fighting the next day five rounders. This is... Make no mistakes about it. It's just not possible to do that at that high level without, you know, putting some chemical performance enhancing drugs in your body. And this we can, of course, only take your word. You know, yeah, we don't yeah. know for sure, for yeah. sure, but you well, were this, his roommate. This last time in the Cormier fight, they found, didn't they say it wouldn't have made sense for him to do this? Like, that it must have been an accidental because it wouldn't have made, he would have absolutely known they were going to test him. So, like, why would he have done, I, I don't know what he got popped with this last time. If, uh, is it Turnable, is it called? Or well, something? Especially after he did his, his whole apology tour yeah. of like, you know, I've changed my life around. He dressed differently. Everything was different. We had him in here talking. He's a whole different person. And yeah. then two weeks later, he got popped again. <laughs> yeah. Of course, man. Anything he says in the media or, or in interviews, you know, it's just, uh, it's a front. You know, he's one of the fakest dudes I've ever met. He says he's all about God, you know, and he's all about this. If you're all about God, why are you out there cheating on your wife? Why are you doing oh all my these, gosh. these stupid things? You know, like... You're not a fan. You're not a guy of God. So stop pretending to be. You know, just embrace your villain role. Embrace the bad guy person that you are. You know, you probably get you a lot more money. Did you have a, a falling out with him? Like that was like, okay, fuck you, and then fuck you, or did it just kind of over time be like, eh, I'm gonna shit on him too. Like I don't like him anymore. Yeah, we had a pretty big falling out when I left junior college. He just uh, he lost his cool one day, and I just wasn't cool with. Him. I was like, dude, you don't treat me like that. You don't treat anybody like that, especially a friend. You know that my mom used to come and cook you meals. She'd fly you out to Oregon, like. She would do, like, favors for him, and, like, you know, my family took him in, like, a, f- a family member of his own, and, and the way he treated me is is not cool, but, you know, he, he was partying a lot, so, you know, he just he just wasn't the same person, you know? Do you think he's going to come back? Uh, I don't know, man. I, he, what he got, his second USADA steroid violation, you know, he's going to be out a couple years. They're making excuses, saying trying to get him back. You know, he might come back. Who knows? I don't know, but that's why I'm here to save this, this the UFC, and and replace him and all the other big fighters. Uh, who else are you? Who are you really close to? I'm really close to my my best friend is uh, Jorge Masvidal, one of my best friends. Man, we we went through a lot together. We train every day together. Man, we, we grind. We're grind brothers. And did he? Uh, how did he feel about <clears throat> what's been going on? Did he not care? Yeah, he doesn't about what. <laughs> Just all the, all, the, all the controversy. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I guess nah. that's that's a that's a big question. That's right? true. About which one specifically? Yeah, it's actually it was kind of funny because he's managed by the same guy as John Jones, Malky Kawa. So you know, I know Malky's in his ear, you know, but trying to tell him, oh, you shouldn't be friends with him. You know, that guy's just going to bring you down. But, you know, he knows what type of person I am. Is it hard to get in your head? Because I noticed that, like, when, when <clears throat> Connor fought Nate Diaz, Diaz is a hard guy to get in his head. He's not a guy that could be psyched out by shit talking him. He doesn't really care. So he seemed to fare a lot better uh, against McGregor because he wasn't psyched out going in. So for you, is it harder to get into your head? I mean, I'm sure it's not impossible, but it's just, it's difficult. No, it's it's impossible, it is. man. I, I... Yeah, I don't have emotions. I don't have feelings. I shut those off after college. So, you know, that's probably why I don't have a girlfriend. I don't care for girls. You know, I got a different girl in my room each day of the week. So, <laughs> so you're saying you're not a very good, a Brazilian, faithful boyfriend? Right? No, I'm very faithful. If, <clears throat> I'm an honest guy, man. I'm faithful. If I'm in a relationship, I'm in a relationship. But I'm single, man, so I'm going to play the field and do what and I want. And a lot of the women are Brazilian? <clears throat> There's, I would say 75% of the women wow. are Brazilian. Yeah. Wow. A lot of Colombians, a lot of Spanish, you know, Venezuelan. Right. I like the girls that are thicker, you know, big asses, big big legs, big fat booties. And every day? Every day. It seems like a, a lot. girl. It is a lot, but, you know, I'm doing a five-round t- title fight, so I got to have my cardio up. Right. Do you practice safe sex? 
Of course, man. Okay. I'm not, I'm That's not the first thing you've said that I object to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The first thing that offended me so far was condom mentioning. Yeah, Jim, did you take that for granted that that was being practiced? No, I, I was hoping that, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I'm like, come on. I, mean, I guess we, we, we fight our own ways. You know, you do it in the cage and <laughs> I do it every time a test comes up. <laughs> Um, so yeah, how, how long before a fight will you not have sex? Because fighters have different things about that. Some guys will fuck the night before and some guys are like, for three months, they won't, they won't do it. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm an everyday type dude. I, it doesn't matter to me. I don't, I don't tone it back, man. I don't, I don't hold back for nobody. So, you know, I... So you have sex with a stranger the day before a fight? Yeah, for sure. I always right. have one night stands before my fights. <laughs> okay. That's part of your, your conditioning. Yeah. You okay. know, I got to get that extra testosterone pump, get my, you know, get my cardio work, work, lose off those last couple pounds before weigh-ins. So yeah. it helps me out. So you don't regret any of this. Obviously you're very comfortable in the, in the kind of the role you have and what's been, not as I say the role you have, well, but just how, in how you're perceived. You're how can you regret if you don't have sure. any emotions? Yeah, I don't have no regrets, man. I, I'm who I am. What shut your emotions off? Like, because you say, it seems like there was some kind of a switch. So what shut them off? Uh, I think just uh, wrestling, not not getting what I dreamed of and wanted my whole life. I wanted to be an NCAA wrestling champ, Division One. and I just, I fell short. You know, I got fifth. It was unacceptable. I should I should have won it that year. And I don't know, I just, I had so much feelings and I let it get to me so much and I was so emotional about it. And I was just like, I'm not going to be like this anymore, and especially coming into this business. This is not a business you want to have feelings. This isn't. A feelings business. So you you decide that because you got you, yeah it's crushing if you want to win something and you don't win it. So you got to crushed mentally because you didn't win this uh, tournament. And then you were like no more. Yeah, and then I was just like I shut it off. I was just like I'm just gonna be like a robot. I'm not gonna care what what people think of me. Everybody has a worthless opinion and they want to state it. So you know I'm not trying to make anybody happy. Was it after? Was it after after you lost? Was it were people saying shit that you didn't like? Yeah, there's there's always haters along the way, you know, in college, high school, there's always people that have opinion on the internet, you know, so, you know, I just was sick of hearing those opinions, you know, opinions don't matter and they're not going to make a difference. They, when, the opinions aren't going to help Rafi Dos Nachos on June 9th when we're in the octagon. I don't think that's his name. No, but it's, <laughs> he, he knows who he means. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so when are you going to Chicago? I'm leaving to Chicago tonight. And what will you do when you get there? Like, do you go out at all? Like, you, you don't seem like you're just going to, you, you have to hole up in the room, I guess, the night before. I guess you're doing a weight cut now. Yeah, I don't really cut much weight, man. I just, I fight in my natural weight. Most of the guys, you know, that are cutting lots of weight, you know, they, they think they get an advantage. I, I don't need an advantage, man. I just fight in my natural weight. And it would be tough, too, if you're cutting weight to have a one-night stand, like, right at the, because you, know, you don't have the energy, yeah. right? Exactly. And you have yeah. to keep your energy up. Yeah. For your, your, well, your virility. Yeah, I'm all about putting in, giving the girl, you know, equal treatment. You know, I got to take care of her. So I got to put in a good hour, you know, pound. An hour? Her. Yeah, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm yeah. good for seven minutes and that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's... And that includes the drive home. And... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so you fight it your own way. That's actually, so I always wonder why guys will cut like 13 pounds or 15 pounds. It's like, there's no way that the, the, the putting that on with fluid or food in 24 hours can make you that much better than somebody who's fighting at the natural weight. Just, well, especially it, since Kobe releases 15 pounds of fluid uh, the night before <laughs> <yeah>. a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. It's not healthy. It's not healthy. These guys are draining a lot of water from their brain. And that's why a lot of them are getting knocked out a lot easier. You know, I, I've never understood. I fight at my natural weight. I'm not, I'm not afraid to fight bigger guys. You know, I know what's going to happen to them. Yeah, they said a lot of people since uh, they, they're doing this uh, earlier weight, uh, the earlier weigh-ins now, there's a whole, a lot more people have missed weight for some reason. Um, because I guess they have hours, Less time to cut? At less time to cut, a few hours less time to cut. Wow, so they're going like the last five to ten pounds, whatever day of. Or two pounds, whatever Two it pounds, is. whatever it is. Yeah, but it gives them more time to hydrate and, and eat up. So I think it's better for a lot of those guys. It doesn't matter for me. I weigh in an hour before. That's what I'm used to doing in wrestling season is weigh in an hour before and then wrestle. So that's why I've always not cut weight because it doesn't make sense for me. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't it be honester or more honest for this? <laughs> honester. <laughs> wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be more honest for the sport if the weigh-ins were way closer to the fight? Well, they are. I mean, they are pretty close the day before. No, but I mean like, like what wrestling is where you go in an hour before the fight and weigh in so it's your true weight. Before you're in, I guess they don't want to cancel fights. It's oh, money. Yeah. You can't. You can't be canceling yeah. fights right before sure. too much money. In. And you want a guy the day of the fight to be able to eat what he wants. You know, if you wake That's up, true. you don't want to have to cut weight. Uh, you know, three hours before you go in, because I think guys will get really hurt doing that. 
Yeah, but it would also force guys to have to fight at their natural weight. They right. wouldn't be cutting so much weight. You know, guys like Khabib would have to fight 170. You know, guys, you know, that are big for the weight class would have to go up a weight class and force them to fight their natural weight. Maybe that's the steps they need to do to make this safer. Yeah, and before we before we wrap up, are you now have you talked you've talked about going up or, or, or going down in weight? I mean, obviously this fight you're fighting, uh, you're not gonna worry about the next one, but where, who who would you want uh at uh, at lightweight, if you had to take somebody, or who would you want at middleweight? Um, I, you know, I'm definitely looking at Khabib and Connor. Both those guys pique my interest. I think those guys, you know, Connor's fought at 170 against Nate Diaz, so he's he's proven he wants to go up in weight. I can meet them at catch weight, so I, you know, I could probably make 55. And then obviously, I want to go after the number one guy, 85 Whitaker. You know, I think uh, he's a pretty good matchup for me. He got knocked out by Choir Boy, Wonder Boy. So, uh, you know, if he's getting melted by him, I'm sure I can melt him. So we're on. We're not on great terms with John Jones. Maybe we're gonna slap Joe Rogan. Uh, not on great terms, specifically with the men of Brazil. Kamara Usman, not good. Not good with 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 Usman because he said he wasn't gonna say anything, but then Fabricio he called him a Verdum. scrub. And, yeah, for Doom, it's not <laughs> not great right now. Um, and also, you you added the word nachos to the name of your opponent uh, for Dosai, for Dosai, this Dosai, Saturday. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is, people should probably tune into the pay per view UFC 225 in Chicago this Saturday. It's gonna, Absol- it's gonna be a show. It's going to be a show. It's going to be a spectacle, you know? That's what everybody's paying top dollar for me. You know, I'm the bad guy. I'm, I'm the super villain, but this is real life. Super villains and bad guys win in real life. We'll see if the nerd bash movement continues.